It's Russell with Community Financials. Today we're going to take a look at Caliber's web portal for board members. And we've got Kimberly from Caliber Software who's going to give us a tour. Thanks, Kimberly. Thanks so much, Russell. So here's our landing page for the portal. Your link will be specific to you and you'll have a, 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 a unique link. You got your logo at the top of the screen. This is customizable and comes directly from Caliber Desktop. And of course, your company name will be here at the top. Registration is quite easy. We'll hit the create login link and the two pieces of information will be the account number and the email address on file in Caliber Desktop. You'll hit the submit registration button and that will send an email to the user so they can click a link to select their username and password. I've got this set up here so I can log right in. And this, this is our board portal. Now this particular user happens to be an owner and a board member. So I've got this toggle up here. If I were just a board member, I would simply not see the toggle and I would just see the board side of the portal. Now this is the board side and we know that because everything here is highlighted in blue. And I'm on my home page here. So I get a quick view of all of the different areas that I have access to. So I've got my invoices, my compliance information, maintenance information, delinquencies, and architectural. Now you get the choice of turning on or off all of these different areas. So you get to decide how much information your board members see. Now in this case, I have everything turned on so I can demonstrate everything to you, but many things can be edited down. Sure, now from here I can say a community board is using some of the features of Caliber, we can unclutter it. Exactly, yes. So you can have this be as much or as little information as you'd like. Terrific. So on this on the on the home area, I have all of my different areas. If I want to click on one of these, it will take me to the full view. Here I am in the architectural area, and I'm going to see all of the architectural requests for the entire community. So because I'm a board member, I get access to this amount of information. If I were logged in as an owner, I'd only see my own information, and I can break this down by all items, the things that are in process, things that might have been rejected approved or waiting approval. Now I can also click on one of these items and it will give me my buttons. Oh, that one. Oh, there it goes. Here's my buttons. I can approve this item or reject it. I can also move along one item to the next and approve and reject as I go. And if there were associated pictures or documents, they would be on the bottom there? Yes, they would. Yes. In the profile area, I can edit information about myself. So I've got my email address here. If I'd like to add something, I can. It will get updated on my record in Caliber Desktop. Phone records works the same way. I can add a phone record and it'll update my profile on Caliber Desktop. Address information, this is just my mailing address. I can't change any legal information about my unit. I can change my mailing address, however. Account records, I can add things like a profile picture if I'd like to. I can also add, uh, change my password over here if I want. And I can use a profile picture if I prefer. And you've got the signature area here. If you'd like to upload a digital signature, if maybe you are an authorized board signer, you could use that digital signature to get that onto checks. And then we have my directory settings. I can opt in or out of specific information so that I can share only what I'm comfortable sharing. In the compliance area, I'm going to see violations for the entire community. If I click on one of these, I'll see the details. If I had any pictures or letters, I'd be able to see those as well. Looks like this one does have a PDF attached to it. These are all of the current items. If I go to the left side here, I can click all items to see everything, whether it's open or closed. Looks like I just have open things here for now. In the maintenance area, I'm going to see maintenance issues that are uh, all units, all common areas that are not hidden from me, and all ad hoc maintenance issues. So we have three kinds of maintenance issues in Caliber, and we will see those in the board area depending on the type, but I will see all of them for all of the units. So as you can see, this one here is for the unit at 6400 lacrosse, and then I also see the one for 6451 lacrosse, so two different ones. This one looks like it has a picture, and yeah, it might be nothing there. There is the work order that was sent out on this one, so we can see that that's attached as a PDF as well. This picture just may not be a, uh, something that was actually uploaded. I can also hit my button for submit new request. I pick my type of uh, issue. Maybe I want to request something on a common area. And I can submit that to the management company to be addressed. 
So if the board is self-managed, we could select one board member who handles uh, overseeing the maintenance requests and then farming them out to vendors. And that would generate an email to that board member? Um, you could do that. That's an interesting question. Um, the, so what this will do when I when I put this in here and it sends it into Calibre Desktop is it just creates the issue. It doesn't actually send out the work order yet because I haven't picked a vendor and I haven't actually uh, queued up the letter. So the parts that come in next would be from desktop where you would send out that work order to a vendor. So if that board member had access to Calibre desktop, they could do that, but they wouldn't be able to do it from the portal, but they could request everything through the portal to make it easy when they go into desktop to get all those sent out at the same time. Terrific. The architectural area is going to show me all of the architectural applications for the entire community. And here they are. We see that there's a green check mark for the approved ones and the red X for the rejected ones. Looks like that one's got maybe one of each. The invoices area is going to show me invoices. Uh, you get to choose what kind of invoices I see. So if you don't want me to see every single invoice, you want to wait until those are waiting for my approval, you can limit the view there as well. And I have all these different uh, filters here for what I'm seeing. These ones are awaiting approval. And this works in the same way as we saw with the architectural items. I've got my buttons for approve and reject, and I can move right along if I want to through items. I can see all of them that have been approved. I can see the rejected within the last 30 days. I can see those items that are in process. I can see the items that are paid within the last 30 days and then all current within the last 30 days, or I can decide I want to see everything. The delinquency area, this won't have anything in it here because I haven't run delinquency for this particular client, but what this will do is it will show a list of owners who are in the delinquency process in Caliber Desktop. Now this won't show owners that have paid late. They have to be in a delinquency process. So if you're not using the delinquency module, this won't do you much good. But if you are using the delinquency module, it will show you only owners that are involved in that. Now in the web links area, we have a folder structure. Looks like I have access to just this one folder. We do have more folders in this area, uh, but the board members are only allowed to see this one folder. So the security settings on each folder will dictate what information each different type of person will see. Links can be uh, either URLs or email addresses here. The documents area will show you the uh, folder structure as well. And each folder has its own security. So here we have the plat map folder. This is only available to board members in this setup, but you can create as many folders as you'd like and you can set each security setting as you need to. In this case, I've loaded up a plat map so that you can see I've got my plat map. I'm gonna look at the image and here it is. It just opens up in a, a new tab and shows you that JPEG. So it's not interactive, but it is a, a, a easy way to see the map of the community. Then we have our directory area here. The directory is going to show information that you decide to show, but each person does have the opportunity to opt in or out of information. So in this case, I believe I have opted in and out. I've opted in to only show these two pieces, whereas these people have more information showing. And we have each uh, group of contacts has their own directory as well. The notifications area will be notifications for architectural items only for now. So if I do have an, uh, a notification, it will show up here. I also get the red bell icon at the top of the screen. So I know that I have notifications that I need to look at. And I know here that I have an architectural issue that is awaiting my approval. Once I've done that, I can click my red icon over here and that will remove it from the list for me. And that is essentially everything on the portal. Pretty straightforward. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you, Kimberly, so much. That was very helpful. And I know that the boards are going to be interested to take a look at the functionality of the web portal. Thanks so much.